you have to kind of wedge your tool in and thin our seams and put your pick in as far as you possibly can and then you want to pull it aside and it's called torquing. And once you torque you want to lean into it Sometimes if you have a hammer on the head of your tool, <laughs> it's kind of sketchy, but you can sometimes wedge the hammer into the crack, but then you're looking at the pick so it pops out. Well, the, I was just saying with Val, the head weights on the Nomex Yeah, the head weights on the Nomex are a little bit wider, which you can lodge into the crack sometimes too. Um, I guess with your feet, like I was saying, you kind of look for whatever big foot holds, wherever there's a good spot to... Swapping out hands, matching on the tools here. I'm hooked in a pretty good spot right now, but I kind of lean into it and torque the foot. My feet are just kind of smearing on the rock. Whenever you can, you want to find big footholds that you can get onto. So, I mean, you can be like smear with the, with the smear with your crampons too. It's not very secure, but it works. It's all fucking wrong. <laughs> so here, I hooked in here and it felt good and by wiggling it side to side, I know that it's good because it's not popping off. But you still don't want a lever on that. If <laughs> you put a, get on something like this and actually that's not bad either. <laughs> See how it pops right off the slope and stuff. I'm yarding with my arms. I'm still really using my feet. I end up doing a lot of drop stuff when I'm doing this climbing. So it is a lot about body positioning and getting the weight on there. Can you say on there you need on your feet? Yeah. Yeah. So like same with rock climbing where you like get the hip in and you drop me. You can do that. Something you want to kind of be aware of is where the rope is running over. So you don't like get the rope running over your tool because sometimes you get a black guy kind of sharp <laughs> and you don't want it to fall off and have the rope running over the top of the tool because it could wreck your rope. But also, Nathan, the rope can can uh, start bumping your tool and it can and knock you in the face and give you a black it eye. It can knock you in the face and give you a black eye, or just give you like a in, like if it's an insecure pick placement, it can knock you right off. Yeah. So. So a lot of times the hardest part is when you get to where the ice and the rock are coming together and you get the ice covering the rock so it fills up all the good mold. So you want to, a lot of times I'll use the side of my tool to the mouth to release ice off. Talk about climbing the thin ice and scritching it instead of swinging. Oh yeah. Um, so see, I can shake out, no problem. I'm actually getting kind of pumped.
chest because you want to make sure that it's deep enough that you can. You want to get in between where there's already a little leg and just make it better. You don't want to swing because you're going to go through and let your ribs. important is um, having boots with good ankle flexibility. So you can see I can like move my foot all around. Um, so the more ankle flexibility you have, the easier it's going to be to use your feet. so you don't have the bail as binding or anything. Uh, I might actually have a pair in my bag I can show you. Peter Pan getaway boots. <laughs> What's that? Peter Pan getaway boots. <laughs> um, if you can find a pair, I definitely recommend getting them. Um, they're way more fun to climb in. Uh, if you don't have to climb in thick hard boots, you know, you'll benefit from them. It's like the difference between climbing in rock shoes and hiking boots. It's just way more fun, they're lighter, and just, you can use your feet a lot better. Um, when you're climbing cracks, you can actually jam your feet into them because these are pretty high profile. 